Narrator. It doesn't matter how much snow falls. When we say a snowstorm, we mean it. How strong the wind blows. Look at the wind. Take that one. And how hard the rain comes down. I've never seen so much rain in my life. NFL football always forges ahead. It's NFL explain. Worst weather games. Narrator. No matter how bad the weather might get, nothing stops an NFL game from finishing. The only weather that matters is whether they wanted more than that. Well, except for that one preseason game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the College All Stars. On the very first play, firing out to Tommy Riemann and a flash of lightning. And believe me, it is coming down. Narrator. This is one of the most insane rain games you'll ever see. The storm that hit that game in the third quarter, straight out of a disaster movie. I don't think I've ever seen it raining started a football game, Frank. I don't believe I've ever seen rain this high. It's crazy enough to think about an NFL team playing against college players, but it used to be a tradition. A tradition that came to an end under what might be the wettest game in NFL history. Narrator. I don't know whether I'm going to stay under an umbrella because you, plus you've got a plastic shaft on it. You might be in deep trouble. Fans at the game used the terrible conditions to storm the field mid-game. So, between college kids running all over the place, lightning, and a ridiculous amount of rainfall, they called the game off in the third quarter. It was the last time an NFL team would play against college players. As the Giants plowed through the slop, one reporter described the field as too thick to drink and too thin to plow. The game ended in a 10-10 tie, costing the Cardinals the division title by a half a game. Mud has made a mess of many games over the years. Let's delve into a few of the NFL's epic battles in the muck. We used to play on the school all the time. The more mud, the better. It really wasn't about scoring or winning. It was just about getting dirty. And that's probably the best way to have it just go down, get dirty, make your mom mad. That's the biggest thing. Reminisce one player. NFL Rookie of the Year, Gale Sayers, was a one-man whirlwind, dashing 85 dazzling yards on the longest punch return of the season. As one NFL legend put it, no one else could take it away, highlighting Sayers' exceptional talent. It used to be when you would ask a kid what happens when you mix dirt and water, the answer is mud. Now, you ask a kid, and they say erosion. I mean, I don't know why you can't get good mud anymore. They got stuff they call prescription earth now. They're messing with things too much. It's like tomatoes. You never get a good tomato anymore. You never get a tomato that tastes like a tomato, lamented a fan. The Mud Bowl nickname also adorned a 1998 game between the Seahawks and Chiefs, resembling more of a flood than mud fest. The storm aimed to outdo El Nino, showering both teams in its fury. With nine turnovers and up to five inches of rain, the game was a battle against the elements as much as each other. The Monsoon Bowl in 1979 saw Kansas City facing Tampa Bay in a game dominated by Mother Nature. With whipping rains making passing nearly impossible, the game ended in a celebration for the Buccaneers, clinching a division title with a 19-yard field goal. From the Tsunami Bowl to the Flood Bowl, rainy games have left their mark on NFL history. In 2020, the Patriots hosted the favored Ravens in miserable conditions, emerging victorious due to their preparation for the rain. Even Los Angeles experienced its share of rain-soaked games, as seen in a 1977 matchup between the Vikings and Rams. A two-year drought ended with a field of mush, leading to a victory for the cleverly camouflaged Vikings. In the annals of NFL history, these muddy battles stand as testaments to the resilience and adaptability of players and teams alike, proving that sometimes victory is claimed not by the strongest, but by those who can best weather the storm. In the winter chill, the Vikings faced off against the Rams, with Minnesota's familiarity with adverse elements proving decisive. They intercepted Pat Hayden three times, including once in the end zone, on their way to a 14-7 victory. 
But before we shake off the snow and hit the powder, let's reminisce about other wet and wild games from the past. The Blizzard Bowl of 2013 between the Lions and Eagles saw snowfall intensify, creating a spectacle that saw seven fumbles and minimal field goal attempts. Lessie and McCoy plowed through the snow for a record-breaking rushing performance, reminiscent of the snowy spectacle of the 1948 title game. In Foxborough, the Patriots and Raiders clashed in the 2001 AFC Divisional Playoff game amidst a winter wonderland of snow. Adam V. Nadiri's heroic 45-yard field goal in overtime propelled the Patriots to victory, kick-starting a dynasty. The Snow Globe game of 2007 at Lambeau Field transformed the field into a winter wonderland, where the Packers dominated the Seahawks with six straight touchdowns. Even the frozen Dundra faithful marveled at the spectacle. In 1985, over a foot of snow covered Lambeau Field as the Packers faced the Buccaneers in the aptly named Snow Bowl. Steve Young struggled to pass them amidst the whiteout conditions, leading to a decisive victory for Green Bay. Who could forget the infamous Stuck Rule game of 2001, where the Patriots and Raiders battled in the snow? Tom Brady's controversial incomplete pass led to a Patriots victory and ignited a dynasty. And let's not overlook the snowplow game of 1982, where the Patriots used a snowplow to clear a spot for a field goal in blizzard conditions, securing a win against the Dolphins. In the annals of NFL history, these wintry battles stand as testaments to the resilience and adaptability of players and teams, showcasing that sometimes victory is claimed not only through skill, but also through enduring the elements. Frozen gridiron glory. Epic NFL games in biting cold and snowy showers footing treacherous and spirits high. The snow plow game of 1982 holds memories of both triumph and controversy. Amidst a ton of rain the night before, the Patriots and Dolphins battled on a frozen turf until a snow plow operator cleared a path for a decisive field goal, sealing victory for New England. However, Miami would have their revenge in the playoffs, poking fun at the Patriots with a pointed parody of snowdrifts. On Thanksgiving Day, the Sleet Bowl or Leon Lett game provided a wild ending as the Cowboys and Dolphins grappled on a field turned icy by relentless sleet. A Bosch field goal attempt led to a dramatic recovery by Miami, securing a last-second victory. And who could forget the Ice Bowl of 1967, where the Packers and Cowboys faced off in unimaginable cold that Lambeau Field, with temperatures plunging to a bone-chilling negative 48 degrees with wind chill. The game earned its nickname as players battled on the frozen tundra. The iconic image of Bart Starr's quarterback sneak for a game-winning touchdown in the final seconds remains etched in NFL history. Moving to Green Bay's frigid playoff tradition, the Packers hosted the Giants in the 2007 NFC Championship game, just a week after the Snow Globe game. Despite the biting cold, Green Bay emerged victorious, paving their way to Super Bowl glory. Throughout the years, Lambeau Field has witnessed some of the most iconic cold weather games in NFL history. From the snow plow game to the ice bowl, these contests stand as testaments to the resilience of players and the enduring spirit of football in the face of nature's harshest conditions. So, as we reminisce about these frozen gridiron battles, let's dip our hats to the heroes who braved the cold and snow to etch their names in NFL lore.